So lately I've been feeling really inspired to film more videos, so screw it, let's do this. For those who don't know, uh, about two days ago, the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC was released. Uh, it has been anticip anticipated for quite some time. Uh, prices $30, adds uh, just basically new content to Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, uh, Kingdom Hearts, obviously. Huge, huge, very complicated series. Uh, very, very passionate fan base. So people have really been looking forward to this one. I just thought I'd give my opinion on it. Um, I played through the entire thing, uh, starting right when it launched at 11 p.m. my time, and I just gunned through it in uh, about four hours. Took took me about four hours. And what the hell? This will be fun, right? Uh, in order, before I start, maybe I think it might be important to kind of give an idea of uh, my history with the series, because sometimes experience can add validity to, to your opinion on something. Uh, I've been a Kingdom Hearts fan for, well, since the beginning, actually. I got the game, the very first game when it originally came out. It's my second favorite game of all time. Uh, I love that game. It has a very special place in my heart, and uh, just... It's very, it's a series that's very close to me uh, for that reason. Um, over the years, I've just, you know, followed it very closely. Um, I've been so obsessed at points that I've imported Japanese copies of games like uh, Birth by Sleep because uh, the way it used to work was sometimes Kingdom Hearts games came out months before uh, they did here in Japan. Um, yeah. So, I've been a pretty big fan. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm like the hardest core fan. I wouldn't win a lore contest to save my life or anything like that, but I enjoy the series. Um, and I think it's full of uh, wonderful moments over the, over the years. The story has certainly become a lot more complex, convoluted, and I don't necessarily play as much for that aspect anymore, but they're still super fun to play. They're super charming. Everything on an aesthetic level is fantastic. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, my my thoughts on it, um, obviously we waited on some level for it for like six years uh, since it was announced, and on some level we were anticipating it for a much longer time than that since the credits rolled on KH2, you might say, you were kind of thinking about it. And for the most part, I think it, it, it delivered. Um, I don't have like too many issues with any of uh, the mechanics of the core vanilla game. Um, I think the game plays pretty solid. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of the uh, ways you could experiment with combos and regarding the form changes and all the options they give you. It's certainly a spectacular game to look at. Amazing music. Um, I I thought it it the base game sort of lacked a bit in content, uh, especially... Um, content that you had to go out of your way to uh, find uh, collectibles and whatnot um, but it was okay like it wasn't it wasn't too bad in that regard gameplay pretty solid nothing spectacular but I thought it was pretty good pretty good my only major problems with Kingdom Hearts 3 and this has always been the case the more and more I've looked at it is really from a story perspective um, I think it's probably the weakest if the the we're mm, excluding Recoded and maybe Dream Drop Distance. Maybe the weakest story in the series. Um, I don't think it quite lived up to the hype in that regard. Uh, I think it has incredibly huge storytelling issues, especially pacing, lack of conflict. That's a whole thing. Uh, it was a major problem I had with it. I think that the story's not very good. Um, it's more of a game that's kind of full of great moments, not necessarily a great story. Um, but that's a whole nother conversation again. So, yeah, I was going in to the DLC, uh, not 100% uh, glowing with Kingdom Hearts 3, but for the most part, I, I enjoyed it. I, I played my, my good fair share and put it away. Um... I had a few expectations going to the going into the DLC. I don't think any of them were too uh, outrageous. I mostly just expected it to be probably what it ended up being, to be honest. Um, many have looked at Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind going in as kind of the uh, 
Three's version of Final Mix. And for those who don't know, Final Mix was, uh, they took three entries in the series. I want to say it's one, two, and Birth by Sleep. Uh, the original game comes out. And then they actually re-released the game with a bunch of new content that they couldn't add originally and beef it up. Uh, it's sort of like an expansion. Uh, usually they're they're pretty stellar. They usually improve the game, the core games themselves. Like they're they're so good that usually it's like you would never want to not touch anything but the final mix version if that makes sense. Twos is legendary for this. Um, a lot of people I think expected three this remind dlc to kind of be that and it's not that it's really not that and i don't think that's entirely a point of too much criticism because i think with the advertise the way they've been advertising this dlc it's always been kind of clear that it wasn't really that they never really quite advertised it as that but some people were expecting that and i think that was a little wrong um to give a good idea, Final Mixes, they often add content through the entirety of the game. Uh, they might add a boss battle that wasn't there before, or an explorable section, or a bunch of new keyblades, or a bunch of new endgame content. Remind is not really that. Remind is more of, the best way I would put it, is a Kingdom Hearts 3 epilogue. Because about, I would say 90%, maybe maybe a little less, of its content is all regarding a... I don't want to spoil too much, but it's all regarding a major story gap in Kingdom Hearts 3 that came in at the very end. And I'm literally talking... If you've played the game, I, I'm going to assume vanilla spoilers are fine. Sora uh, sets, sets out to go find Kyrie at the end of the game. We then cut to the final uh, uh, montage where we see he's found her and disappears. Y you remember. The big question on everyone's mind was what exactly happened. Remind is the answer to that question. It is the story that takes place in that gap. And lovingly and, and like in a really surprisingly awesome way, it's a little bit more than that. Uh, but it's still epilogue, I would say. There are a few additions it, it does add to the, to the base game. We got a free update with two new Keyblades, Oathkeeper and Oblivion. Um, we got a really cool, um, uh, in the Remind, I think this is part of the actual paid package, a difficulty modifier system, which is really neat, really cool. That's going to increase uh, replay value. Um, and some new abilities, which uh, I think make, uh, I won't touch on it too too much, but I think they make um, base Sora a little bit more fun to play. So cool stuff. Nothing huge, certainly nothing on the level of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix if you want to compare it to that. No, no, no. Most of this is this epilogue section I'm referring to, which is cut into two parts, but we'll get into that. Overall, I expected Remind to entirely fix Kingdom Hearts 3's lack of content uh, issues and not really fix any of the story issues I had with it. And that's pretty much exactly what I would say ended up happening. The answer to is re is Remind any good? I'll, I'll, I'll go over what I liked, what I didn't like. Is it worth the price? Summary, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I wasn't wowed by it. And there's a lot of interesting reasons for it. Um, again, I don't want to spoil too much. But the bulk of it is really regarding Sora and how he managed to find... Kyrie, and as it so happens, and if you've been paying attention, to, paying attention to the way they've advertised this, this isn't too surprising. It involves him kind of revisiting the ending that we already knew of Kingdom Hearts 3. And in the end, it's kind of the developer's excuse to, to fix um, issues people might have had with the plot. But probably even more so with the gameplay, because it adds uh, alternate characters you can play as. It adds explorable Scala Ed Kylum. Uh, they tried to redeem Kairi, in a sense. Uh, lots of the core issues a lot of people have with the game. And it mostly fixes them, to, to generalize, I'll get more deeper into it, but it mostly fixes them, but in a really kind of awkward way. Um... I'll just say that 
time travel is involved. And rather than it being something a lot more simple to my mind than had they just literally fixed some of the issues people have with the end game, uh, like adding in these other fights like during these segments and stuff like that, it is literally a segment that now takes place after already beating the game in a separate menu completely separated from the base game where Sora literally goes back and you're watching basically the storytellers fixing the issue it's really like bizarre what it results in is some some really um fan servicey cool moments certainly um they dive they they divulge more info that you might not have had i'm not gonna spoil again some cool really cool moments that i'm sure are gonna make people out of happy make people really happy for me personally even though these moments are cool and seem really dramatic and intense and beautiful like as you see at like from from a surface level they they don't really hold much weight and they don't really feel that exciting because it's all it's all taking place after the core conflict of the story is already done. It's very confusing to explain. But like because it takes place after Xehanort has been defeated and everything, it's just this like awkward revisiting to the moments we've already finished to basically for the developers to be like, oh no, it turns out that that was the case. It turns out that this was a little deeper than you thought. Uh, it turns out that... Sora was actually here this whole time. Um, it's not entirely what it is, but I just want to simplify. Um, and like, it it provides an excuse for all these really cool fan servicey moments that I'm sure people felt were lacking in the original game. But it's just, it's very awkward because it is like tweaking the original game literally in the game. It's hard, it's very hard to explain. But because of that, it's like, you know in your head, and if you're playing the game in a linear fashion, then you literally ha can, you've just seen it. You've just seen it come to an end. And then Remind is, as the title would imply, reminding you of what happened, but also divulging more information and new twists and new gameplay stuff. And it's just a really weird way of doing it. It was never unexpected that they were doing it this way. Like, it was pretty clear. But I don't think that changes the fact that it's a problem. The other issue with this is that because of that, you're re-exploring... Most of it is you re-exploring an area that you've already fully beaten. Boss fights that you've already fully beaten. The way they justify it is with these new cutscenes, which I think are a little too exposition heavy, honestly. I didn't care too much for them. But also with, oh, but now you get to do these fights with Roxas, with Aqua, with um, Riku. And it's cool. It is cool. I do think that the characters weren't as mechanically deep as I was hoping. I'm not too surprised. There is one exception to that, um, which I'll get into. But it was cool. It was cool. But it's kind of weird because, like, I just, I think it would have been so much more satisfying had they literally done it like Final Mix, where they just edited the original final segment and found a writing way, a different writing way to make, make it so that you can just select these fights now in the base game. I think that would have been a much more satisfying way of doing it. It would have been taking what we already had, what was already a pretty great thing, because the final segment of Kingdom Hearts 3 is pretty spectacular, and just making it even better. But in the end, it's just kind of weirder and doesn't work quite as well. Again, they weren't as mechanically deep as I was hoping they would be. Um, that's So I've gone over like kind of how, in my opinion, from the gameplay changes and the story perspectives, it doesn't quite pay off because of its weird structure and weird choices. Um, there is one exception to the gameplay one, though. Uh, you do finally get to play as Kairi, uh, which we all... No, they've they've clearly demonstrated that. And while this moment, in my opinion, didn't at all redeem her from a story perspective, because she, she still got yeeted, like, she still, like, most of these things don't really matter. They just need to get out of this place, Sora and Kairi. While it didn't really redeem 
her Machin Maker more proactive to my mind. There's a couple things like she swings her Keyblade at a couple people that you wouldn't have seen before. It did, um, however, just wow me in terms of gameplay. Uh, Kyrie is, to my mind, the second most fun character to play as in all of Kingdom Hearts. I absolutely adored this game's final uh, reminds final moments because of this. It is, it's a final boss fight that is, in my opinion, far better than the original final boss fight. It just feels more dramatic. Kyrie is just so much fun to play as. And she's probably the first alternate character who actually has about the depth level of, of Sora himself. Like, for example, she has every spell. That's one example, right? Whereas some of the other characters you play as in this, they only have like three spells or something. They put their heart and soul into developing Kyrie. It shows. Other parts of Remind, I feel like, feel quite soulless and uh, heartless. Um, because while they are kind of fixing some of these issues and adding in these cool things, it's all done in a really kind of forced and lazy way where they're also finding an excuse to reuse assets that you've already seen. And you will see assets again. Again, there's some new stuff. There's one new explorable level, Scala at Kylum. It's fun. It's it's good. Um, from a pure gameplay perspective, most of this is all pretty good. Um, for the most part. So it's it's honestly it's a lot like Kingdom Hearts three. It's a lot like Kingdom Hearts three itself in this uh, in this gamer's opinion. Um, but yeah. That is kind of the bulk of it. I think the final moments are spectacular. There's some really cool moments. It's just kind of awkward. It kind of just doesn't mean much when it's already past the end conflict. It's way too exposition heavy. Good God, it's way too exposition heavy. Like, characters are constantly explaining things and how we should feel, and it doesn't feel, like, natural as much. But there you go. On its own, I would say that personally, it is not worth $30. However, something happens after you beat the Remind DLC. You unlock the second section, Limit Cut. And in every way, in my opinion, Limit Cut is by far the highlight of this DLC. I don't know 100% if it makes this worth $30, unless you are a core gameplay fanatic of Kingdom Hearts 3, then absolutely. We'll get into that. Limit Cut is a second, much, much, much shorter segment um, that is basically a few cutscenes, a, a little bit of story, takes place... The timeline of it is actually kind of a surprise. I'll leave you to discover that. Um, which has a character, basically, you, you as the player, uh, revisiting Radiant Garden. And, uh, this is where you actually see the Final Fantasy characters. And it is basically the game's excuse for having the data fights, which were so beloved, uh, the revisiting of the data fights. They're not the same ones, but were so beloved in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. The data fights were always a highlight for me personally. Um, and they don't fuck around in this one. They, they deliver. It's 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 really good. They're very challenging. I feel like honestly, uh, from a gameplay perspective, it's that's it's all pretty good, right? In that regard, and even more so. And this might surprise people to know, but even though Limit Cut barely has any story and is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction shorter than Remind, in my opinion, the story is the cutscenes are more satisfying, um, because. You get to see a couple, right in the beginning, you get to see a couple characters interact that you, like, haven't, like, seen yet and get kind of a good idea. It's just, like, the kind of good type of fan service, in my opinion. It's less like, oh, we know you wanted to see that moment, and more like, oh, cool, now I get to see what, what these characters would be like in a conversation, and they have to go about it in a certain way where, like, Sora's not involved. And so it's just really cool to give, like, it's really short. It's just this, like, quick little couple cutscenes. 
But for me, it was really kind of nice. It, it really kind of made me a little bit hyped for the continuation of the series, because I was like, yeah, I really want to see how these characters interact and stuff. And that was cool. And then you get the Final Fantasy characters, which I, I didn't think was going to hit me as hard as it did. I thought, eh, Kingdom Hearts has kind of grown beyond them. It's fine. And then when you see them, it's so short, but it's like, it's, it's, mm, it, it did something for me. I, I, I felt, I felt a little like kind of, kind of misty eyed and, um, because it was so nostalgic seeing them again and the cutscene's cute, but something weird happened with it, right? So in this setting, you're in Hello, you're in Radiant Garden, you're surrounded by Final Fantasy characters, the Radiant Garden theme's playing. I feel it's important to note that it's literally just a room. It's literally just one room that you're exploring in Radiant Garden. It's Merlin's house. That's it. But despite all that, there's something about it where, like, I, I told my friends, I was stop, I stopped to think, like, this is, like, the beginning of, like, uh, of the Kingdom Hearts 3 that we never got. And it's kind of, like, really heartwarming and awesome, but it's also kind of, like, bittersweet and frustrating because we didn't get it. And it's all happening after the fact, and it's all happening at literally after the fact in the story. But like, there was just something so like, you're just like, oh, I want to be here. I want to be in Radiant Garden and explore it. I want the Final Fantasy. Like, to my mind, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with having wanted it to kind of like have this stuff in the base game. Because they were always kind of a core element of the series as it progressed. And I think it makes logical sense that in 3, that they should have been in 3, these things should have been in 3. I do. I do. I think you can somewhat make the excuse that it's grown beyond it and they don't necessarily need it. But at the same time, they were always a big part of Kingdom Hearts. And it makes sense that it would, that it would be back. Hopefully, once you play it, you'll realize what I'm talking about and this will make more sense. But bottom line... Uh, it involves that, and then it involves something I'm definitely not going to spoil afterward. Um, but it's mainly gameplay. It's by far the better gameplay segments. Um, super good stuff. I would say it definitely inches the DLC to being closer to worth $30. If you are a casual fan, and you just kind of played through the series, and you were like, Okay, yeah, that was that was good. And, and you played 3, and maybe you, you enjoyed it. Or maybe, or maybe even you didn't enjoy it particularly. But you're hoping like this will like redeem redeem some of it for you. I would say it's probably not worth it. If you're a hardcore fan, well, you've probably already made up your mind. But if you're a hardcore fan, um, or even just something closer to it, uh, like I would consider kind of myself, um, then I would say it's it's probably worth your time. Um, definitely for what it adds afterward. In my opinion, the way they should have done it, um is honestly, I, I say it should have, they should have just cut out the entire Remind section, which is, again, four hours. It's 99, 95% of the entire DLC. They should have just cut out the Remind section, and I would have just had just the limit cut stuff and charged, like, 10 bucks, or, like, maybe a little less. But to me, that's, like, the highlight uh, of it and, and kind of redeems it a little bit. Other than that, like, by the end of Remind, I was like, eh, it was alright, it was alright. It's worth playing, but it didn't add too much to it. Overall, I think it's made Kingdom Hearts 3 a slightly better game, uh, especially in terms of content. Uh, for those hoping that this is suddenly going to do what 2 Final Mix did for the original 2, I don't think it quite does that, to be honest. Uh, and for those hoping that this would suddenly make it like, absolutely perfect and spectacular. I, I don't think it does that, too. I, I just... Me, personally. Um, I also think there's... It kind of... Especially from a story perspective, only try to improve and perfect the parts of Kingdom Hearts 3 that, to my mind, didn't need all that much improving or perfecting while doing nothing with the parts that did mainly the entire first 80 percent of the game and it's pacing and it's filler and again it's a whole other thing but it doesn't really do anything to that but overall it's a decent package um if you i've given you my thoughts you probably know by now if you're getting it or not but hopefully you enjoyed 
this little take on it. Go ahead and ask me any questions if, if you want. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and I can't wait to start another one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.